Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 124th episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it has, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. I realized that when it comes to modern rap music, I've inadvertently kind of been passing over the South, to the point I'm not sure if I've covered even one 2010 Southern LP yet, outside of Killer Mike's inclusion in the Run the Jewels album I talked about a while back. But when it comes to Big Crit, he's one of the best examples for displaying how high-level hip-hop, with lots of effort put into it that comes from true students of the game, can and usually will have a lot more longevity than someone who's just chasing trends for clout. For instance, when you take a look at the cipher from 2011 or so that actually originally introduced me to Crit, you'll see him rapping alongside other big names at the time, like Kendrick, Tech 9 Machine Gun Kelly, or B.O.B. Obviously, Tech was a longtime veteran in the game already, and while Kendrick may have reached a higher level of fame and status, in terms of studying the culture and quality control, him and Big Crit have much more similarities than they do differences. Both MC is extremely proficient with crafting interesting, unique flows and songwriting in general that set them apart and kept them from sounding dated or old school, while still displaying a clear reverence for the pioneers before them. They also both happen to be double XL freshmen in the class of 2011, with both of their ciphers being essential watches, especially the K Dot one, as you get to hear him and Lil B go back and forth. Definitely a moment for hip hop, especially in hindsight. But I bring these up mainly because of the other guys I mentioned in the first cipher, namely Machine Gun Kelly and B.O.B., who definitely were more famous than Crit at the time, with both having some pretty big hit songs especially B.O.B. However, when you look at who had more longevity as actual artists, MGK seems to be having a constant midlife crisis about his musical identity and totally abandoned the wild boy sound that blew him up in the first place. As for B.O.B., I don't even know what he's doing currently, but he doesn't seem to be on too many people's radars, but when you look at Big Crit, he hasn't abandoned his origins at all, yet he steadily progressed as an artist and polished his craft, to the point he has a pretty staggering discography now. It just goes to show that you might find more immediate success following trends and whatever sound is popping off at the time, but in the long run, both the artist and the fans get bored and will move on to the next thing. If you're constantly evolving and pushing yourself the way this dude has and continues to do, that core fan base gets mostly made up of real true fans. If you're a fan just because the person is popular, and you like one song or their general aesthetic, you'll probably get to a point where the shows aren't selling out anymore, because you ran out your meter on that gimmick. That's exactly what's happened to a lot of the SoundCloud face tattoo guys that seemed on top of the world in 2016 or so. Now dudes like Lil Pump and Lil Skies are struggling to sell out their shows, and they get angry and confused because they don't seem to understand that they spent their time partying and celebrating their achievements instead of practicing and trying to grow as an artist. Big Crit is also one of the first names that pops into my head whenever I'm on some old UGK or Outcast video and I see the common, oh, people aren't doing this today. But if you're remotely familiar with either of those acts, you won't be able to put Forever in a Day on and not see the direct influence and inspiration from either group, especially when it comes to the late legend Pimp C. There's definitely an element of Big Boy and his alien flow at times, but on Crit's breakout tape here, he really displays his reverence for Pimp C by channeling his essence better than anyone else I've ever been witness to by a mile. If you're genuinely a UGK fan and not someone who just comments about 90s hip-hop being better the second you click on the video from that decade, you really can't deny the justice that Crit does the legendary duo here. And clearly the other half of UGK agrees, considering that Bun B has collaborated with Crit a number of times, as have countless Southern legends. To spit these killer verses that quite literally sound like they could have came out of Pimp C when he was alive is impressive enough, but then molding it to still feel modern and culturally relevant is no small or easy task. Yet this dude continues to do it year after year, and it's such an inspiring trajectory, because while I first really got acquainted with Crit through his double XL spot, I'm pretty sure I first heard him through the ridiculous posse cut one train. The massive ASAP Rocky track that included legends like Kendrick Lamar, 
Joey Badass, Danny Brown, Big Crit, and a number of others. However, I was still pretty new in terms of my hip-hop journey, so I didn't think too much about Crit's verse towards the back end, but that's just because his dense flow and wordplay was over my head at that age. It later became one of, if not my favorite verse on the track, and in a weird way, this actually kind of likens him to Cannibal Lox's Vortal Mega, in my mind at least, where really the music itself isn't remotely similar, but I feel like they both kind of have restrained and studied flows, that can almost sound a bit off at first, but then once you get used to it, it can often be more rewarding than styles that may have been instantly gratifying the first time you heard them, as those can end up feeling boring and played out when they don't get switched up enough. One pretty insane fact I've somehow negated to mention until now is Big Crick doesn't just spit immaculate verses on the mic, he's actually a ridiculously proficient producer, which really isn't an exaggeration, considering he produced all 17 tracks on here, or 14 in the version I have, which is pretty much what he does with all of his albums to my knowledge. And it's also worth mentioning, I'm pretty sure he does all of the mixing as well, which is almost unheard of. He has zero features or guest appearances helping him out, which means he was at the helm for literally the entire project in every aspect, and it must have been extremely personally rewarding when the sales and acclaim started to roll in, as the trade-off for carrying all the risk on his back alone is getting to control every aspect of your vision and reap the rewards. When it comes to my honorable mentions on here, I'd probably go with Wake Up, Yesterday, Forever in a Day, Theme Song, Country Rap Tunes, Sky Club, Package Store, and Temptation. My three favorite songs overall on this one would probably have to be Me and My Old School, 1986, and The Alarm. Thank you for watching my 124th video. We have one more album left in this group to discuss, so tune in to see what that one is, as well as like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite songs off this modern southern classic are. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? Alright.